All right. So what I want to start with is this theorem from last time. P is a dualizable pattern. Then uh, with dual P star and S zero surgery on P of U. It's homeomorphic to the zero surgery on P star of U. And the proof was simple, right? Um, since uh, we just described the zero surgery as gain filling the, the pattern exterior. I'm going to go space here. So this is also just the same thing as the exterior of the dual pattern. The basic idea is that, you know, we could take the, the pattern exterior and just turn it inside out, uh, and just fill back in. And so when we, you know, must have gone the same thing. And so, uh, our goal for today, our main theorem, we're going to prove is uh, we also have a diffeomorphism of zero traces. Okay. Uh, and let's first talk about some consequences of this. So let's see. One thing we need to know is that uh, this is a consequence. But if P and Q are dualizable patterns, then P composed of Q is dualizable. With dual. Q star composed of P star. And the first corollary of the main theorem uh, is that the zero trace P of K diffeomorphic to the zero trace P of U connects some of K. So proof. By the way, I'm going to say the proof for the main theorem till after we go through all these corollaries. So the K sharp be the pattern in a solid torus. Which has geometric y number one. Such that K sharp of U. When you uh, apply the satellite pattern to the unknot, we just get K. Okay. Uh, and this is a dual ionical pattern. With dual. Uh, Dualizable and the dual is just itself. So, first thing to observe is that P composed with K sharp 
of u is just k. And then the dual of p composed of k sharp is just k sharp composed of p, right? But if we apply this to the unknot, we get k sharp of p of u. That's p of u connect sum with k. Okay. And then by main theorem, uh, these two things have different morphing zero traces. Uh, any questions so far? So, Another corollary is P bar star of P of U is concordant to the unknot, i.e. it's slice. Same thing with P of P bar star of U. So, To show that it's slice, we're going to show it has a zero trace diffeomorphic to slice knot. Okay, so proof. So we have x zero. Oh, wait, um, one thing we need is. Let P sharp be the pattern, which is a uh, geometric line number one, such that uh, P sharp of U, just P of U. So, vectorially, just looks something like this inside the solid torus. So we want to show that this zero trace is diffeomorphic to a zero trace of a slice knot. So first thing to observe is that x zero, this zero trace is It's P sharp of U is equal to P of U. We can place this P of U with P sharp of U. Uh, this is equal to P bar composed with. I'm missing. These are missing stars, my bad. This composite pattern applied to U. But then uh, the zero trace is uh, diffeomorphic to a zero trace with this the dual of this pattern. The dual of this pattern is just P sharp composed with P bar of U. Then we see that this is just. P sharp, P bar of U. And then this is just P bar of U. Connect some P of U. But of course, take any knot, connect some of its reverse orientation. This is slice. But now this implies. guy here 
Whereas this guy here is slice. And then the other direction, because remember, we also wanted to show that uh, we had two directions. First one was P bar P of U, as well as P of P bar star of U. We just did this one here, um, and this one here uh, is the exact same, basically. Okay. Yeah. What does the bar mean again? Uh, what was it? Universe orientation, I think. Uh, take the pattern. Uh, hold on. Let me pull up the paper real quick. I think what you do is you take the, because the pattern, the pattern is just S1 into solid torus, right? Uh, I think what you do is you take, I want to say, Uh, P bar is first take an orientation reversing map of, let's call it, I don't know, um, uh, F, which reverses the orientation of S1. So, Go from S1 to S, uh, S1, and this reverses orientation. Then you take your pattern P, you take that map into S1 cross D2. And then you do one more map, which I guess is F cross identity. So you reverse orientation on S1 factor and also on the S1 cross D2 factor. And I'll be P bear. And then um, because this uh, P bear view is just uh, the, what's it called? P of U, but uh, mirrored with reverse orientation. And also the, all the crossings change, I yeah. guess, when you think about it. I think so. Good. More questions? All right. Uh, theorem. Uh, so we'll take the dualizable of P inverse to note P star bar, then P inverse of P of K is equal to K, and P of P inverse K is also equal to K. So what this says is that um, this pattern uh, acts objectively on the not concordance group. Uh, it won't uh, necessarily be a homomorphism, but induces this map, uh, bijective map on concordance group. Uh, again, the proof is pretty simple. Uh, we want to show that P bar star P of K connect to some minus K is uh, is slice, right? But this is because I'll show that P bar star of P of K is going to K. This is just K bar 
sharp composed of P bar star, P bar K sharp, a view. Let me write this as K sharp composed of P star bar, P composed of K sharp, a view. And then, um, K sharp composed of P star is dual of P composed of K sharp. So that implies that uh, P bar star, P of K at some minus K is slice. So we get the exact importance. Um, this is comes from, this implication comes from the last corollary just proved. Uh, can I erase all this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, and the theorem I'm going to state without proving is xn p of u is diffeomorphic to xn tau n p star of u. So this main theorem we're focused on uh, is for zero traces, but it's this is a very straightforward generalization of uh, this main theorem we're going to prove. And let's recall the main theorem. Uh, that x0 p of u, the zero trace of p of u is diffeomorphic. The zero trace of p star of u. Uh, and so the rest of the talk is going to be dedicated to proving this fact. And to prove this, what we're going to do is Right, describe manifold X with a zero handle, one one handle, and two two handles. And we'll see that this one handle and the two handle cancel and get X zero P of U. But we'll also see that uh the one handle and the other two handle they cancel and we'll get x zero p star of u uh let's see and i guess I want to review a little Kirby calculus first. So, uh, so call that a one manifold X uh, has a handle decomposition. Uh, any four manifold X. So you can write it as zero handle, you need one handles, you need two handles, you need three handles, you need four handle. Uh, and since we won't need them for today, we're just gonna focus on four manifolds that don't have three or four handles. We'll see how to draw Kirby diagrams with them. And in particular, we know how to do handle slides and handle calculation, uh, Handle slides and handle cancellations. So the zero handle just uh, 
64. And we attach our one handles and two handles. The boundary of this, which is just S3. And this we'll just think of as the board, this boundary S3 as the board union point at infinity. One handle is just D1 cross D3. And the attaching region, boundary D1 cross D3, which is two disjoint copies of D3. So we draw this. in the diagram as we cut out two spheres and I imagine gluing a, uh, I don't know, so like a tube on top of them. And two handles, D2 cross D2. So these attached along, round to D2 cross D2, i.e. S1 cross D2, a solid torus, in the boundary uh, about zero handles, even one handles. Uh, and these are determined by not plus framing. So usually we'll just draw a knot right down framing. So this is a uh, star right there. It's just a two handle attached with zero framing along the trefoil. You can also have more complicated stuff. So you take, let's say, one handle and also attach a two handle onto that, which goes over the one handle. So this goes through the one handle and comes out the other side here. Let's see. Any questions on this on the handles? Okay. Uh, Let's talk about how to slide two handles. So let's just drop down to a uh, dimension. So let's say I have this is a picture of some three dimensional two handles attached to some three manifold. And I could slide. Um, the two handle on the left over the other one. And what this will look like something like this. But now the new two handle sort of goes over the other one. Uh, and this basic sort of picture you should have in your head for sliding four dimensional two handles. So let's say we had, I don't know, a these two handles, these two two handles, uh, let's call this one, let's call them A and B. And so to slide A over B, we need a push off B prime described by the framing. So this goes over. Under it twists, twists around once because it's framing one. And we take a band sum 
of the uh, knot coming from the two handle A. We'll just push off. So we get something that looks like this. See, so B doesn't change at all, so still has fending one. Uh, framing on A is going to change. So if A is framing, let's say, N1, B is framing. And two, then the new framing is N1 plus N2 plus or minus the linking number of A and B. Uh, and plus or minus is determine whether or not they, uh, the orientations of the two knots agree or not. In this case, they do. Uh, A and B have no linking. So the new the framing of this guy is going to be 0 plus 1 plus 0, so 1. Any questions, guys? Uh, Oh, one thing to, I want us to recall, I probably should have said this earlier, because earlier, it'll come up later, is that um, framings aren't well determined in the presence of one handles. So let's take a very simple picture, Kirby diagram. zero, we have one handle and a two handle attached along it. And take a slight push off to denote the framing. And if we, we can isotope uh, the two handle in this diagram and actually the the linking with uh, the push off is going to increase by one. We take, um, how do I draw this? We take. Red curve. So push around. I'm going to keep track of the framing curve and then pull it around over this and then isotope red back to where it was before. And what happens is we get uh, blue will get wrapped around it, red sometimes, some number of times. Uh, not sure how many will be in this situation. Uh, I don't understand what the what it means to push it over the line that you drew. Oh, so you take like these two strands, you kind of grab them, and you pull them over the circle, the sphere, 
and then you go back behind it around and that'll add some twisting so why am uh, I allowed to do that? Isn't there a handle in the way? No, uh, there was only one. What is a? Because uh, like the one handle, it goes like um. How to put this? Like the one handle like isn't in this picture. So you sort of delete it, and then it goes sort of outside this. That makes sense. Another way to think about this is that we delete the interior of those two balls and connect and glue them together. Um, well, the, the one handle like won't be blocking this. It sort of goes above this boundary S3. Does that make sense? What happens is, imagine, That's a one handle, it goes above it. These spheres here, uh, those red circles there, um, and like this doesn't block, this one handle above everything doesn't block me from taking this green strand, just pulling it over behind this, this red sphere. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, should I think of like, can I go like under in this picture? Is that the right way to think about it? Or? We have to go all the way around. So you have to go like under then over. Oh, so, oh wait, no. So in the yeah. picture, you know, the picture is in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. So you can actually just imagine going into S, like I don't know. So you can actually just imagine this being some physical thing that you're holding with, like, like a belt with two things on the end of it, and literally just like manipulating it so that the ball goes through the hole, like he has it drawn, or the the straps put over the the, the end of it. Uh, it just so happens that the one handle is just not there because it's not in S three at all. Yeah. It's in the dimension that you can't see the the rest of the one handle. But part of it is there, right? Okay. Yeah, just the ball part. Just the ball part, but because we're missing that ball part, like everything's fine. You can go around that ball, right? That's fine. Okay. 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 Yeah. Sorry, I'm good. Okay. Cool. Uh. Yeah. So let's talk about handle cancellations. So you can cancel one handle and a two handle. As long as we have uh, if they what is it? If the Attaching sphere of the two handle intersects the belt sphere of the one handle. In that case, when we have, have something that looks like this in that picture, and the two handle can be framed like this, um, any framing. Uh, this also works if, for example, with some knotting in the two handle. So let's see what will this look like. Uh, basically trying to draw a check oil right now. So check oil looks like that. So this is going to look like sorry. Uh, there we go. Yeah. 
Do you guys also have to do this too? If you try to draw a knot in S1 cross S2, you have to draw like the trefoil first and then imagine. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, like for some reason, like this is like the knot that you tie your shoe with, right? And then I like just try to freehand draw it and it's like impossible. Yeah. Wait, this is not you tie your shoe with? Right? Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, huh. Well, it's only half of it. It's actually, it's either a granny knot or a square knot when you get done. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and so we can actually take this picture and if we drag the sphere along the knot, then it will just look like this. Uh, like the picture we had on top, and then we can cancel. And then canceling here, we just just looks like deleting the spheres and the one handle. No, the spheres and the, the knot. So these cancel just fine. Uh, one thing we should know how to do though is how do we cancel? Are you saying no matter what the framing is, if I can untie this thing basically then they cancel or yeah is frame? okay it doesn't matter what the framing is mm -hmm. because oh because of what we said before which is that we can change the framing mm -hmm. yeah well the important thing here is that the so the belt sphere um so this this red i'm drawing is not in the S3 sort of goes above it so that so this is the one handle that's like sort of above our picture the belt sphere is up here and the attaching sphere of the two handle runs along it it intersects one point um, that's why these all this also cancels Erase all this. Um, things get more complicated though if we have other things running along our, our one handle. So let me say we have some two handles going in on each side. Then Find the picture. So sorry, guys. So my, I was planning to finish prepping this talk during my office hours, but then students actually ended up coming. So I don't have all these pictures from this part on out, like when, like drawn down already. So things might get, uh, oh no, a little sketchy. So let's say we have something like this. So. Uh, maybe we have a framing curve too. For this two handle, we want to cancel. Um, and now the concern is what happens these two handles out here. So what we want to do is slide these off the one handle. And you can do that by sliding it with off this uh how do I put it along the two handle we're canceling with. So then we'll get something that looks like you take all of these strands and slide them over. It'll look something like a 
will run along the knot. I hope this is clear what I'm trying to get at. Let me draw the two handle of canceling in blue. So this blue one goes into the other attaching sphere. All these guys just go off the screen. But now what we can do is take this attaching sphere and slide it along the blue curve. So that'll just be, so I'll get unlinked the rest of the picture. The rest of this stuff will look this is a really bad picture. I'm sorry guys. Just be destroying from this. And then we can just remove this canceling zero in one handle. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? It's kind of tough to draw these pictures on the iPad. And let's see. Now, I want to draw, erase all of this. Now, imagine we have uh, now remember we have this pattern P. Okay, we also had P hat, which is thought of as we took the S1 cross D2 and just embedded into S1 cross S3. And so let's attach a two handle framing zero uh, along P hat in the, in the boundary of the zero and one handle. And let's also attach a canceling two handle. Okay. So let's cancel this two handle with the one handle. So what we can do is we take the strands of this and we slide them over this canceling canceling two handle. So take the first strand, take each, all these strands and can't and slide them over the zero handle. And it'll look like this. So, so I'm framing zero. And so now we get this picture. We have this knot up here. And then we can cancel this zero and one handle down here. 
Now, what knot is this up here? This guy here, what knot is this? That's P hat U. Oh, P of U. Oh, oh P of U, yeah. Yeah. So what four manifold is this? Zero trace. Both of these could, what? Zero trace. Yeah, the zero trace, okay. So this is zero trace of, so we can conclude that this is a zero trace of P of U. At this picture down here. All right, and now let's redraw this picture a little. Uh, I'm going to imagine we push this red handle out to infinity. So now it's going out through the point at infinity. Uh, and now um, this two handle attached along P hat. Because it's uh, dualizable, from what Jonathan told us last week, we can isotop it. So now it's where this red two handle is, right? So we can isotop, isotope this, swap places with the red handle, right? So now black is going out to infinity. Then red, well, what happens to red? The red two handle. Becomes P dual. Yeah. Hat. So now we get P dual hat. And now I'm going to push uh, the this two handle affinity. I'm going to bring it back down uh, so now we can then cancel it again by sliding the red handle over the black handle uh, so we get erase this up here. Hat star. Plus a canceling uh, zero and one handle. We can remove these. Uh, and then, well, what knot is this? This is just P hat star of U. So this is the zero trace p hat star of u. And therefore, that's diffeomorphic to zero trace p of u. OK? Uh, and for much example, there's one thing I skipped over here. What is that? Uh, it's very subtle. Uh, I mentioned earlier this will come up that uh, when you do these ice toppies, swapping the red and black handles, we don't necessarily get that these are going to be zero framed once we're done. Um, that's a small complication, but because of this. Uh, Dualizable patterns with this um, requirement on the framing curves, which I don't want to talk about too much, but I'll make sure that these actually both end up being zero. So we're done, which in this. And so we proved our main theorem 
that not only the zero surgery is homeomorphic, but the zero traces are also diffeomorphic too. Okay. I think that's all I have for today.